Nomenclature, Wikipedia article audio. Nomenclature is a system of names or terms, or the rules for forming these terms in a particular field of arts or sciences. Nomenclature is the system of assignment of names given to organic compounds. The principles of naming vary from the relatively informal conventions of everyday speech to the internationally agreed principles, rules, and recommendations that govern the formation and use of the specialist terms used in scientific and any other disciplines. Etymology Onomastics and Nomenclature Influence of social political religious factors on names. Naming is a cultural activity. Names, words, language, and meaning. Folk taxonomy. Names and nouns. Personal names. Common names and proper names. Anim nouns. Toponyms. Scientific Nomenclature Nomenclature, Classification, and Identification Biology Astronomy Chemistry Metallurgy Physics Archaeology Naming things is a part of general human communication using words and language. It is an aspect of everyday taxonomy as people distinguish the objects of their experience, together with their similarities and differences, which observers identify, name and classify. The use of names, as the many different kinds of nouns embedded in different languages, connects nomenclature to theoretical linguistics while the way humans mentally structure the world in relation to word meanings and experience relates to the philosophy of language. Onomastics, the study of proper names and their origins, includes anthroponymy, toponymy and etymology as revealed through comparative and descriptive linguistics. The scientific need for simple, stable, and internationally accepted systems for naming objects of the natural world has generated many formal nomenclatural systems. Probably the best known of these nomenclatural systems are the five codes of biological nomenclature that govern the Latinized scientific names of organisms. The word nomenclature is derived from the Latin nomen, name, and calera, to call, the Latin term nomenclatura refers to a list of names, as does the word which has a wide-ranging scope encompassing all names, all languages, all geographical and cultural regions. The distinction between onomastics and nomenclature is not readily clear. Onomastics is an unfamiliar discipline to most people and the use of nomenclature in an academic sense is also not commonly known. Although the two fields integrate, nomenclature concerns itself more with the rules and conventions that are used for the formation of names. Same things may be given different names and different things may be given same name due to the social, political, religious, and cultural motivations. Closely related similar things may be considered separate, and on the other hand considerably different things might be considered same, both due to the social political religious contextual reasons, for example closely related mutually intelligible Sanskritist Hindustani language Hindi versus Arabist Hindustani language Urdu being favored as separate languages by Hindus and Muslims respectively as seen in the context of Hindu-Muslim conflict resulting in violent 1947 partition of India. Whereas mutually unintelligible speech varieties that differ considerably in structure such as Moroccan Arabic, Yemeni Arabic and Lebanese Arabic are considered same language due to the pan-Islamism religious identity. Names provide us with a way of structuring and mapping the world in our minds so, in some way, they mirror or represent the objects of our experience. Elucidating the connections between language, 
meaning and the way we perceive the world has provided a rich field of study for philosophers and linguists. Relevant areas of study include, the distinction between proper names and proper nouns, and the relationship between names, their reference, meanings, and the structure of language. Modern scientific taxonomy has been described as basically a Renaissance codification of folk taxonomic principles. Formal scientific nomenclatural and classification systems are exemplified by biological classification. All classification systems are established for a purpose. The scientific classification system anchors each organism within the nested hierarchy of internationally accepted classification categories. Maintenance of this system involves formal rules of nomenclature and periodic international meetings of review. This modern system evolved from the folk taxonomy of prehistory. Folk taxonomy can be illustrated through the Western tradition of horticulture and gardening. Unlike scientific taxonomy, folk taxonomies serve many purposes. Examples in horticulture would be the grouping of plants, and naming of these groups, according to their properties and uses, annuals, biennials and perennials, vegetables, fruits, culinary herbs and spices, herbs, trees and shrubs, wild and cultivated plants and weeds, and so on. Folk taxonomy is generally associated with the way rural or indigenous peoples use language to make sense of and organize the objects around them. Ethnobiology frames this interpretation through either utilitarianists like Bronislaw Malinowski who maintain that names and classifications reflect mainly material concerns, and intellectualists like Claude Levi Strauss who hold that they spring from innate mental processes. The literature of ethnobiological classifications was reviewed in 2006. Folk classification is defined by the way in which members of a language community name and categorize plants and animals whereas ethnotaxonomy refers to the hierarchical structure, organic content, and cultural function of biological classification that ethnobiologists find in every society around the world. Ethnographic studies of the naming and classification of animals and plants in non-Western societies have revealed some general principles that indicate pre-scientific man's conceptual and linguistic method of organizing the biological world in a hierarchical way. Such studies indicate that the urge to classify is a basic human instinct. The levels are moving from the most to least inclusive. In almost all cultures objects are named using one or two words equivalent to kind and particular kind. When made up of two words the name usually consists of a noun and an adjectival second word that helps describe the first, and therefore makes the name, as a whole, more specific, for example, lap dog, sea salt, or film star. The meaning of the noun used for a common name may have been lost or forgotten but when the common name is extended to two or more words much more is conveyed about the organism's use, appearance, or other special properties. These noun adjective binomials are just like our own names with a family or surname like Simpson and another adjectival Christian or forename name that specifies which Simpson, say Homer Simpson. It seems reasonable to assume that the form of scientific names we call binomial nomenclature is derived from this simple and practical way of constructing common names, but with the use of Latin as a universal language. In keeping with the utilitarianist view other authors maintain that ethnotaxonomies resemble more a complex web of resemblances than a neat hierarchy. A name is a label for any noun. Names can identify a class or category of things, or a single thing, either uniquely, or within a given context. Names are given, for example, to humans or any other organisms, places, 
products, as in brand names, and even to ideas or concepts. It is names as nouns that are the building blocks of nomenclature. The word name is possibly derived from the Proto-Indo-European language hypothesis word nom. The distinction between names and nouns, if made at all, is extremely subtle although clearly noun refers to names as lexical categories and their function within the context of language, rather than as labels for objects and properties. Human personal names are presented, used, and categorized in many ways depending on the language and culture. In most cultures it is customary for individuals to be given at least two names. In Western culture, the first name is given at birth or shortly thereafter and is referred to as the given name, the forename, the baptismal name, or simply the first name. In England prior to the Norman invasion of 1066, small communities of Celts, Anglo-Saxons, and Scandinavians generally used single names, each person was identified by a single name as either a personal name or nickname. As the population increased, it gradually became necessary to identify people further giving rise to names like John the Butcher, Henry from Sutton, and Roger son of Richard, which naturally evolved into John Butcher, Henry Sutton, and Roger Richardson. We now know this additional name variously as the second name, last name, family name, surname, or occasionally the by name, and this natural tendency was accelerated by the Norman tradition of using surnames that were fixed and hereditary within individual families. In combination these two names are now known as the personal name or, simply, the name. There are many exceptions to this general rule, Westerners often insert a third or more names between the given and surnames, Chinese and Hungarian names have the family name preceding the given name, females now often retain their maiden names or combine, using a hyphen, their maiden name and the surname of their husband. Some East Slavic nations insert the patronym between the given and the family name, in Iceland the given name is used with the patronym, or matronym, and surnames are rarely used. Nicknames are informal names used mostly between friends. The distinction between proper names and common names is that proper names denote a unique entity e.g. London Bridge while common names are used in a more general sense in reference to a class of objects e.g. bridge. Many proper names are obscure in meaning as they lack any apparent meaning in the way that ordinary words mean, probably for the practical reason that when they consist of collective nouns, they refer to groups, even when they are inflected for the singular e.g. committee. Concrete nouns like cabbage refer to physical bodies that can be observed by at least one of the senses while abstract nouns, like love and hate refer to abstract objects. In English, many abstract nouns are formed by adding noun-forming suffixes to adjectives or verbs e.g. happiness, serenity, concentration. Pronouns like he, it, which, and those stand in place of nouns in noun phrases. The capitalization of nouns varies with language and even the particular context. Journals often have their own house styles for common names. Distinctions may be made between particular kinds of names simply by using the suffix anim, from the Greek nu omicron mu alpha name. So we have for example, hydronyms name bodies of water, synonyms are names with the same meaning, and so on. The entire field could be described as chromatonymy, the names of things. Toponyms are the names given to places or features of a particular district, region, etc. This could include planets, countries, cities, towns villages, buildings etc., it can be further divided into specialist branches, hodonymy, 
the names of streets, roads, and the like, hydronymy, the names of water bodies, and oronymy, the names of mountains. Toponymy has popular appeal because of its socio-cultural and historical interest and significance for cartography. However, work on the etymology of toponyms has found that many place names are descriptive, honorific, or commemorative but frequently they have no meaning or the meaning is obscure or lost. Also the many categories of names are frequently interrelated. For example, many place names are derived from personal names, many names of planets and stars are derived from the names of mythological characters, and many personal names are derived from place names, names of nations and the like. In biological science, at least, nomenclature is regarded as a part of taxonomy. Taxonomy can be defined as the study of classification including its principles, procedures, and rules, while classification itself is the ordering of taxa into groups based on similarities or differences. Doing taxonomy entails identifying, describing, and naming taxa, so nomenclature, in this strict scientific sense, is that branch of taxonomy concerned with the application of scientific names to taxa, based on a particular classification scheme and in accordance with agreed international rules and conventions. Identification determines whether a particular organism matches a taxon that has already been classified and named so classification must precede identification. This procedure is sometimes referred to as determination. The precision demanded by science in the accurate naming of objects in the natural world has resulted in a variety of international nomenclatural codes. Although Linnaeus' system of binomial nomenclature was rapidly adopted after the publication of his species Plant Arum and Systema Naturae in 1753 and 1758 respectively, it was a long time before there was international consensus concerning the more general rules governing biological nomenclature. The first botanical code was produced in 1905 the Zoological Code in 1889 and Cultivated Plant Code in 1953. Agreement on the nomenclature and symbols for genes emerged in 1979. Over the last few hundred years, the number of identified astronomical objects has risen from hundreds to over a billion, and more are discovered every year. Astronomers need universal systematic designations to unambiguously identify all of these objects using astronomical naming conventions, while assigning names to the most interesting objects and, where relevant, naming important or interesting features of those objects. The IUPAC nomenclature is a system of naming chemical compounds and for describing the science of chemistry in general. It is maintained by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. The rules for naming organic and inorganic compounds are printed in two publications, the Blue Book and the Red Book available here. A third publication, Green Book, contains recommendations for the use of symbols for physical quantities, while a fourth, the Gold Book, defines a large number of technical terms used in chemistry. Similar compendia exist for biochemistry, analytical chemistry, and macromolecular chemistry. These books are supplemented by shorter recommendations for specific circumstances which are published from time to time in the journal Pure and Applied Chemistry. These systems can be accessed here. The classic English translation of De Re Metallica includes an appendix detailing problems of nomenclature in weights and measures. <laughs>